What's up, awesome YouTubers? Ryan1988 or Justin back here to do a video for you all. And I'm here to review and give you my thoughts on one of my most anticipated movies of the year, and that is Alien Romulus. And this just came out yesterday, and I knew I wanted to go see it opening weekend just because, you know, I, I knew eventually spoilers were going to come out. You'd see things on Facebook. And also, again, it's one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Um, ever since I heard about this announcement, I was so excited about it. Uh, I remember originally it was going to be a Hulu original, and then uh, they put it in theaters, which, after seeing the movie, I'm glad they made that choice because the movie is meant to be seen on, a, on the big screen if you're watching it for the first time. Um, and then we got the first trailer. And the first trailer was just so awesome. Um, didn't give much away. And I'll be honest, like, some of the other trailers, while there was, like, some small major... Well, some spoilers given away in the trailers. Even those scenes didn't show you everything. So... You know, the trailers are great, and the marketing's been great for this, and I love that people are talking about it, um, and, you know, critical-wise and moviegoer-wise, overall, you know, the reviews and the responses have been very positive, and I kind of knew that was going to be the case because you have Fede Alvarez behind the scenes directing this movie and he directed Evil Dead from 2013, uh, Don't Breathe, uh, those are his two big movies. I think he did a, well he did direct a um, um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie. I think it's Girl with the Spider's Web, which I haven't seen yet. I own it, need to watch it, but um, I think out of all the movies he's directed, that's the one that's not been critically successful and hasn't had the most positive reviews, but outside of that movie, you know, Evil Dead 2013, it took me some watches to finally appreciate and love the movie, and I love it so much now. Don't Breathe, I've always loved that film. And, you know, with Alien Romulus, I'm going to say it right now, I love the movie. And I'm not going to talk much about it, because... There are spoilers in this movie. There are twists and turns and reveals that happen that I don't want to give away. And if you've seen the movie, don't leave spoilers down in the comments because if somebody hasn't seen it, I don't want spoilers to get out with this movie. Um, all I say is I love this movie. I I love... I'm a big Alien um, fan anyway. I love the franchise. But what I love about this... And why I'm going to rank the franchise in a minute for you all and include this, obviously, is what I love about the movie is it goes back to the horror movie roots that the first one had. And one of my pros with this movie is the scares. Like, for me, in my opinion, this is legit scary. When things start happening... It just gets intense, and it gets scary at times, and, you know, there was times I was on the edge of my seat, sort of talking at the screen very quietly. Um, things that surprised me that I was in shock of and surprise, and you don't have that a lot of times with horror movies anymore. Um, and so I loved that. Uh, you know, the movie centers around a group of friends who are trying to almost... No, well, they, they do want to get off of the Earth or the planet they're living on right now because people are slowly dying with this disease. And so they want to find a new, uh, you know, a new planet, move somewhere else. And they figure, or they find out that there's this abandoned ship floating around and to get um, pods to sleep in, they break into that ship, wanting to take those and escape. 
And what happens is when they get in this in this abandoned um, ship known as Romulus, uh, havoc starts breaking loose, and the aliens and the xenomorphs and the face huggers happen. And I think you all know, um, you know what happens um, with the uh, the trailers that reveal reveal the little things that happen. I'm really bad at giving plots away. <laughs> so that's kind of the gist of it. Um, you have a fantastic cast in this movie. I really love the cast. Um, I think her name is Kaylee Sweeney? Sp Sp Spainy? Hopefully I'm saying that right. She plays the lead character, Rain. And I, I love her. She's not trying to be the new Ripley. She's her own character. There are, you know, small, small homages that, you know, you see Ripley in, but this is her own character. Rain is her own character. And I really love um, Kaylee's performance in this. I think she's just great. And, you know, if we're going to call her a final girl, she's a great final girl. She's just a great female character in a movie. And I really loved her. Uh, and I loved... You know, her brother in this, uh, Andy, uh, you know, I think they're the two um, performances that really stand out in this movie. And there's stuff with Andy that I'm not going to give away that you'll find out in the movie early on. But he's a great character. I believe the, the actor's name is John Johnson. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. I'm really bad with names, but the actor who played Andy was fantastic, and uh, I really loved those two performances the most, and I feel like they just had great chemistry on screen because they're playing brother and sister, and it just comes off that way, and I, I really loved their performances. The rest of the cast is great. You know, one of the complaints that people are talking about even before they see the movie is the cast is too young, and I think that's BS, first of all, to say that, um, because every one of them give 100% in the movie, and I love their performances. There's not a bad performance in this movie. There's a character you don't like in the movie, but, you know, you always have to have that unlikable character, but you kind of know why he is the way he is, kind of in the beginning of the movie, which I won't give away. So he's not like a villain type character. He's just an unlikable person um, when you first meet him. And he's, you know, not that likable as the movie goes on. Um, but overall, I think this cast is great. They give 100%. I loved them. Loved the performances. Uh, when we're talking about practical and um, set pieces, you know, or when you're talking about effects and a set and set pieces, 99% um, of this movie is practical. And Fede Alvarez wanted to do that. He wanted to go back to practical sets and awesome set pieces. And you see it in this movie and my face lit up. I was like, this is amazing. The xenomorphs and the face huggers. I'm like, this is great to see. It brings you back to, especially those first two Alien movies. How much you kind of, how much you loved, you know, the practical work and the set pieces. And this movie has that, and I really loved it. Um, and then you know, the music is another big thing. You know, music for me in a film is a character, and it can really make a movie. It does make a movie. I mean, look at Halloween. That score is iconic. Look at the original Alien. Terminator. Like, the scores and the music. It's a character in a movie. And that is just part of what makes a movie. And you get it with this movie. You know, you have some of that classic Alien music in it. But also you have a wonderful score all around. And I absolutely loved it. Um... And then the last thing to talk about, you know, Fede Alvarez, like, he is just easily one of my favorite directors working today, or working within the last 10 years. And I looked at his, you know, um, 
directed history and he's only directed i think five movies um which is crazy but like now you, you you can also look at like a james cameron who's only directed less than 10 movies or quinn tarantino the same way these are just awesome directors who pick the movies that they want to do and you know I, I give them much praise for that i i really love you can have a director direct a whole bunch of movies and there's some fantastic movies in their, you know, directorial, you know, credits. But I love the fact that, like, Fede, you know, every two or three years, sometimes five years, will come out with a movie. And, again, I haven't seen his Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie, but, like, Evil Dead, again, has grown on me quite a bit. I love that. It's one of my favorites in the franchise. And Don't Breathe is one of the best movies from the last decade. And this will be, definitely be one of my favorite films of this decade. It is it is one of my favorite Alien movies. And uh, it's going to be one of my favorite movies by the end of the year. I'd say it's my favorite horror movie. Like, I love Maxine. I saw Maxine. It's my second favorite horror movie. I really love that. But this is my favorite horror movie. You know, and until another horror movie comes out this year that I see, you know, this is my favorite one. It's fantastic, and I'm so happy with it, and I was not, I am I am not disappointed in the movie. Um, the movie wraps with an ending, which I'm not going to give away, obviously, because I don't want to spoil anything for you, um, that I could see be divided by audiences. Um... But I loved it, and it was a refreshing new thing within this franchise and universe that Fede brought to it. Every director, I feel, has brought something of their own style to an Alien movie, and this was his. Um, and I love the ending. Uh, some people, probably not everyone's going to love the ending, but I loved it. I love this movie. I'm so excited to rewatch it again. Um, I don't know if I'll go see it again in theaters. Uh, my local theaters closed down, so mine, the theater I go to now is like 30 to 35 minutes away. Uh, but I will be buying this day one when it comes out on 4K. I cannot wait to see it again. And now I just quickly want to rank the franchise for you. As far as a rating for Alien Romulus, I would give it, if I rated movies, I don't really rate them anymore, but if I had to rate them, this would get a 5 out of 5 for me. Uh, again, there's there's small CGI moments that you could tell is CGI, but it's, again, 99% of this movie is practical. And then you have that 1%, which is CGI. And you know what it is, which again, I'm not going to give away, but you know what it is when you see it. And it didn't take away from the movie for me. So um, so let's rate the franchise. Let's go through them. Ranking them. Rate. Rank. Let's rank the franchise. Um, and let's see. What do we got here? Um, be right back. Sorry about that. So uh, I was forgetting some movies in the franchise. And I had to pull the uh, physical media because I like to show it. Um, uh, anyway. <laughs> We are going, or I'm going to rank the Alien franchise from my least favorite to my favorite one. Uh, I believe there's seven or eight movies now. Could be wrong. I'm just going to rank them. Uh, so coming in at, you know, last place, and this is probably the only one I would say is a bad movie. Um, I loved it in theaters. I haven't rewatched it in probably three or four years, but the last time I watched it, I was like, this is terrible. My opinion definitely changed on this movie. <laughs> and that is um, AVP Requiem. Um, I would think that this movie would, or if this movie would be better if you would be able to see the film. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters and thinking, you know, it's okay. You know, it's still an alien predator movie. But now rewatching it, if the movie would have had a lighter, not lighter tone to it, but if it, if you would have been able to see things, 
in the movie. I think the film would have been better. I think the story is weak, but I think this movie definitely had the gore and the kills that you would have appreciated, I would have appreciated more if the film, you know, if, if you were able to see the film. Like, something happened, I think, during <laughs> the editing process, and it's such a dark movie that you really can't see a lot that's going on. So for me, this does rank last, um, and it, it would be the bad movie of the franchise, because every other movie I either really enjoy or love. Even with some of the the next movie next movies i'm going to talk about that do have flaws like this next one and that is uh alien 3 and i don't have a standalone release for it but alien 3 i'm not a fan of the director's cut it's okay i with this with this particular movie or out of the two versions that we have, it's not even the director's cut. You know, uh, David Fincher has disowned this movie. Um, so there's not a director's cut, but out of the two cuts of the film, I am definitely more of a theatrical fan. Uh, it's more nostalgic for me. Even with the flaws, um, I, you know, I really enjoy the theatrical cut of Alien 3. I can go and watch the movie and be happy with it. Obviously... There are things I would change about it. The opening of the film, I just dislike. And I dislike it just because it shifts things and changes things that you love about aliens. And it's upsetting. So I don't like that. Um, the story's okay. Or the story's good. It's a good story. But... It's not one that I remember a lot of. When I watch the movie, I really enjoy it, but it's it's not one of my favorites. So Alien 3 um, comes into second to last. Uh, I'm going to rank this one right now here, but I really... You know what? I love this movie. Uh, it's not even a film that I really enjoy. I love it for what it is. And again, if you watch the director's cut or the unrated unrated cut, it is the one to watch. That's Alien vs. Predator. I watched it the other night for its 20th anniversary release, and I still love this movie. It's a lot of fun. It's got some great practical stuff in there. It's got some great visuals in there. Um, Paul W. Anderson, or Paul Anderson, um, does a great job as a director of this, and is, this is definitely one of his better movies. Uh, and I just, I have a fun time with it. I love the setting. Uh, I love that we have these two icons going head to head. And um, it just, for me, it's a great movie. I love it for what it is. Very nostalgic for me. I was a teenager at the time. So the movies that were coming out, like from 2000 to 2005, that was like my teenage years. And I really loved that time in film. They weren't perfect movies, but there was a lot of great movies that I just, I still love today. And this is one of them. I just absolutely love it. Um, up next, again, the box set. I'm going to show it. Uh, Alien Resurrection. I love it. Uh, again, not everyone's favorite movie. Not everybody loves it or appreciates the movie, but... Again, there's something nostalgic about the film that I just really love and I have a lot of fun with. Um, Sigourney's great in all of these movies, including Alien 3. She's the best part about that movie, but, you know, this is one of her best performances in this franchise. And I really like the direction that they went with a, you know, a, a resurrected Ripley. She's not really Ripley, but, you know, she is Ripley. Um, she's a clone of her. Uh, and then I love Winona Ryder in it. The cast is great. You have Ron Perlman. Love the direction. One of my favorite scenes in the franchise has to deal with underwater. And this is the first time you're seeing the xenomorphs swim and chase people. And it's still a great and creepy and effective scene today. And I really, I love the movie for what it is. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's just 
a blast to watch. So, um, I think that's number eight or nine. I think we have nine movies. If you're including the AVP movies, which I'm going to in this, because there are xenomorphs, uh, that is number six. So, um, coming in at number five is Alien Covenant. Um, this is the last Ridley Scott Alien movie that we have right now. He might come back in the future. I doubt it. Um, but I love Alien Covenant. I, again, I watched it recently, watching this franchise leading up to uh, Alien uh, Romulus. And I still love this movie today. I actually think it gets better with each watch. It's got great action. It's got great scares, intense moments. Um, I've always been a fan of Prometheus. You'll see that on this list soon. And I, and I like that universe and story that Ridley Scott was telling in that movie and then carried on in this film. Um, my only small gripe with this movie is, you know, you, you he obviously wanted to bring the idea of Prometheus into this movie and also the idea of Alien and the Xenomorph. And when you get to the Xenomorph stuff, it's a little bit rushed. And... I wish they would have made the film a little longer or trimmed some of the middle half of the half of the movie out. That way you had a good balance there. But I still love the film. And when you get to the Xenomorph stuff and the Xenomorph is on the spaceship, it's still great stuff. And again, you got a great mix of action and entertainment and scares in the movie and while it's not one of the scariest movies, and I feel like Alien Romulus really brought back the true scares of Alien, I still think there are some eerie, creepy things in Alien Covenant. So, this is number five for me. I absolutely love it. Uh, coming out at number four, this used to be my third favorite, but I still love the movie today. I saw it opening weekend. It was awesome. I saw it in 3D. And... You know, people hate this movie, and I don't understand why. You know, it's it's not your, you know, typical alien movie. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. I love this alien franchise. I love the Xenomorph. But I love what uh, Ridley Scott did with Prometheus. You know, there was there, there, that question of, you know, who was here before we were type of thing. And, you know, it kind of has that story in there. Um... And I loved it. And I still love it today. It's intense. It's borderline creepy. It's not as scary as some of the other movies, but it's still very intense. And there's still very effective, scene, effective scenes in this. I love the character of Elizabeth Shaw. I've always loved that character. Again, one of my only... my One of my other small flaws with Alien Covenant is how... That character was written off, and I would have done something different. I, I just didn't like that direction. It's almost like Newt and Hicks in Aliens. Like, when you get to Alien 3 and how they're just killed off in the beginning, it's something sort of like that with Alien Covenant with Elizabeth Shaw. I love that character in this. Um, I love the practical work. I love the practical settings. Again, Ridley is very, overall very known for those life size practical sets and that world is amazing and so I love what he does um in this movie with the practical sets and the practical effects and of course you have the visuals in this movie that I think are stunning especially on 4k it looks amazing I love it um just absolutely love Prometheus. And for the longest time, it was my third favorite movie in the franchise or this universe. But coming in at number three is the latest movie, and that is Alien Romulus. Um, it'd be baffling to rank this higher than the next two movies because those are very nostalgic for me. And I love those movies so much. I love this movie so much. It's a five out of five for me. The other movies are a 5 out of 5. I don't know where I'd rank the others. Prometheus would get a 5 out of 5 for me. That's amazing. Uh, Alien Covenant would get like a 4.5. Uh, 
And I don't know the rating for the other ones. I'd have to really think about that. Because my top five are definitely like, there's only one that's a 4.5, and the other ones are five out of fives. Um, this is a five out of five. Alien Romulus, I talked about it already. I love this movie so much. I cannot wait to put it in my Alien franchise collection and watch it again. Absolutely love it. So that comes in at number three. Uh, coming in at number two is Aliens. Again, it'd be baffling to put Romulus past Aliens. And for me, this is definitely better, but I love Romulus. But I love this a little bit more. Um, again, five out of five. Top-notch stuff here. Uh, almost 30 years later in this movie. Just holds up so well. Again, I've, I've watched this 4K twice. I love the transfer. I know some people don't love it, but I love the transfer. Um, Sigourney, this is her best performance as Ripley. She just, she's fantastic in the original movie, but she owns it in this, and she's just awesome. And I love her. Um, love the characters. Newt, Hicks, um, Lance Anderson's character, which I'm drawing a blank on his name. He's great. Uh, it'll come back to me sometime. It will come back to me. Uh, trying to think of his name, and it's just, I'm drawing a blank on it. Um, but I love that character. Uh, it's gonna come to me. <laughs> that name's gonna come to me. But anyway, just, I love this movie. What I love is James Cameron went a slightly different direction, and while it is scary at times, it is an action movie, and it's one of the best action movies of all time, and I love it so much. So, um, what can be said that's already been said about this movie, it's just amazing. That third act, wonderful, um, the characters are great, you know, there's, every character has their own personality in this, and their own character traits, and I really love them. Um, rest in peace, Bill, Bill Paxton. He's great in this. You know, this cast is just wonderful. And I love the film. The Queen Alien. This is the first time that we've seen the Queen Alien. And I still get goosebumps every time we get to that scene where we finally see, finally see her. Uh, just creepy. So, Aliens, fantastic. I love both cuts of the movie, but I am definitely more of a fan of the director's cut. So, um... You know, there's scenes in that that were left out that I just think are wonderful. And so coming at number one, my favorite Alien movie still today, Aliens. I know there are people that prefer Aliens over this, and, and people that prefer Alien over Aliens. And I'm one that says Alien is the best. And I've watched it twice recently. I've seen this movie so many times. This is just recently that I revisited this movie. And... It's one of the scariest movies of all time. And I think I even said in my last, you know, post about this movie, this is the scariest movie of all time. It's not my favorite horror movie. That's Halloween. And there's other movies that rank over this as some of my favorite horror movies. But this is the scariest one for me. The claustrophobic moments in this. The fact that you don't really see the xenomorph up until the end of the movie, you only see glimpses of him. And the fact that some of the deaths you don't see, you just hear things or see small bits of it. That's scary stuff right there. That is the scariest things about horror movies. The things that you don't completely see and you have to envision that, envision that in your head. That is scary stuff. The music's iconic. The set pieces are iconic. The chest burster scene still holds up today. Every time that scene's about to happen, I know it's going to happen, but it's still, I still, my heart still races when that's going to happen. So, I love this movie. It's still my number one favorite film in the franchise and, and one of my favorite uh, movies in general. So, I hope you enjoyed my review of Alien Romulus. I recommend go to the theaters and see it if you have one near you. It needs to be seen on the big screen. Uh, you know, there's some people are saying this movie's fan service, and yes, there's tributes, but I appreciate that so much. There's things that 
Fede did, Fede did that paid respect to all of the movies. And I love that. He wasn't one that was going to erase um, movies that people hate. He was going to include those somehow. And I love that and I appreciate it. So that's my review of Alien Romulus. Again, go see it. And that is the ranking of the franchise from my least favorite to my favorite. I hope you enjoyed this video, you all. I'll be back soon. Uh, October's coming and I got some great stuff, you know, up my sleeves. So anyway, as always, you all are awesome. You all rock. I'll talk to you soon. And remember, in with the positive, out the negative. Go eat some Skittles. All right. Love you all so much.